Hello traders, Cousin Vinny coming to you from TheClosingPrint.com, October 25th, 2020. In this edition of your weekend video newsletter, we'll discuss the end of sieve, all of which moved higher last week with the NASDAQ composite and the S&P 500 closing strongly for the second straight session, leaving the bulls feeling pretty good going into the elections just seven trading days away. The interesting thing last week was sellers kept at bay, even as stimulus talks dragged on, with the Russell 2000 small cap index leading its charge higher, forming a three weeks tight pattern over the last few weeks, with the October 12th high just overhead at 164.24. We're looking for a breakout after the election, if not sooner. Despite the market headwinds, the three major stock indices still look pretty strong from a technical perspective. The Dow, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ are forming handles, holding support above their 50-day moving averages, while the indexes are setting up for possible upside breakouts with the bond stock ratio bullish, tick and tick Q are still in bullish cycles, and breath continues to improve. There is no safety trade to speak of with the US dollar drifting a bit lower with gold holding in a range below the 50 day and bonds trailing off into the elections. The heat map is improving with XLY XLP ratio still rising that's telling you institutions are positioned bullish into year end. Strength in transports, biotechs, communications, utilities, healthcare, financials, industrials, consumer discretionary, and retail. International markets are improving as well with Asia leading last week. We saw China up 2.18% last week. In addition to improvement in the European ETFs that are all holding above their 9 and 21 day moving averages. We'll look at some IBD 50 names, all of which look pretty strong. As the markets pulled back last week, these stocks showed relative strength, most likely following through if we do get a stimulus package and the markets drift higher. In addition, we also have a handful of Dow Industrials that look pretty strong going into this last trading week before the elections. Bukowski, of course, has 5 of 5 green with a CPI signal green at 78.9%. That's bullish with six bearish patterns, 14 bullish patterns, and 161 patterns waiting for breakout. This week, indicators 12 are bullish, seven are neutral, and one is bearish. Short term, we're neutral to bullish going into the elections. Intermediate term and long term are bullish. Bottom line, we are neutral to bullish, we're trending, the S&P 500 and spiders have resistance overhead at 35.86 and 3.58 on the spiders. Support at 34.09, 3.40 for the spiders. While we anticipate transports and small caps will follow through into year end. To start off, let's take a look at the S&P 500 during the election seasonal patterns that we've seen since 1949. This chart was put together by Jeff Hirsch and also his father who created what's called the Stock Traders Almanac. We can see that all election years in blue after the November elections tend to move higher. In addition to what we see with the incumbent party, if it wins in green, and if the incumbent party loses in red. The reason for the latter is because the new president wouldn't begin to start executing the new administration's policy until the new year. Therefore, we should anticipate that the S&P 1500 composite will remain on a bullish signal. These S&P 500, S&P 400 mid caps, S&P 600 small caps will continue higher, held the 21 day moving average. Last week we're seeing blue elder sticks 
suggesting that move sideways and continue a range until the elections are over. Histogram is above the two trigger line and rising. While breaking down the advanced decline of these three components, the S&P 500 in the upper panel, advanced decline, mid caps in the middle, small caps in the lower panel, all moving away from the 200 period moving average, or printing higher highs and higher lows moving away from the 200 day, all the while waiting for the advanced decline percent breath thrust to improve. We hit zero S&P 500 mid caps, small caps, and NASDAQ in the lower panel, hitting the zero line, refreshing, getting ready to push higher, it appears, giving us renewed energy into November, while the McClellan oscillator also moves higher, signaling improving breath, but not overbought. All of this with the backdrop of the New York Stock Exchange's advanced decline, with advancers beating decliners as we continue higher into this week. As we mentioned earlier, the NASDAQ composite, over 2,700 stocks, forming a cup and a handle, closing above the 50-day moving average last week. Wicks underneath these candles showing that buyers have stepped up north of the 50-day, looking for stochastics to continue its march higher, and lending for a more bullish scenario going into the last seven trading days before the election. Small caps, the Russell 2000 closing at the highs of the session on Friday. Herein, we're looking for a breakout into year end as small caps and transports are leading. All of this happening, of course, as the AAII bull bear ratio reversing, leading to the start of this secular bull market back in 2009, and each of the subsequent cyclical bull markets starting with a pivot as the bears lost control, bulls took over. In each case, both in 2010 and 2016, right after the last presidential election cycle started, we're looking for the same thing to start as we previously mentioned with election years, finishing the year strong. We're looking for this particular ratio to continue higher, which would forecast the S&P 500 in the upper panel to continue as it has in the past. Finally, VIX will start off the week with a green signal. In the past, when we've seen these green signals, we were looking for higher highs and higher lows. We'll look for higher highs and higher lows this week as well. The bond stock ratio in the lower panel between the 10-year and the S&P 500 is neutral to bullish. We're below the 65 period moving average. As the 10-year bond underperforms, it suggests the 10-year yield is moving higher. And that translates to more bullish things to come for the stock market, which is also reflected in high-yield corporate debt and junk bonds as they move higher. This is bullish for equities with the longer end of the curve showing the same tendency. Here is the 20-year TLT drifting lower on the weekly time frame, suggesting there is no safety trade by institutions, whom are very familiar with this particular tendency for the markets to move higher in an election year into year end. As we can see here also with gold moving lower below its 50-day moving average, lower highs and lower lows suggesting there's no safety trade in gold either. While copper continues its breakout from the 2011 highs, the peak breaking above the last bullish cycle during an election year in 2017, Dr. Copper continues to forecast better things to come, just like it did back in 2009, three to four months prior to the reversal March of 2009, copper continued to lead the markets higher, suggesting this cycle will repeat again, while crude oil remains range-bound for the past 20 weeks. No signal here, but there is a bullish correlation to the market, so if crude oil does break higher, 
narrow Bollinger band suggesting that we might see something soon, and these seasonal patterns continue higher into year end. The YXLP ratio continuing higher. We have yet to see a peak and a plateau like we did in late 2018 or in February where our markets rolled over very quickly. This suggests that institutions are bullish into year end with all sectors above their 21 day moving average, the blue line, with the exception of real estate and technology. The latter looking for a push back above the 21 day. We had strength in communications, healthcare, financials, industrials, retail, and consumer discretionary, which suggests a follow through into year end. Transports and small caps are leading. Here are the IBD 50 stocks for the week ahead. These are five minute charts. Note VWAP is the dashed purple line with many closing at the highs of the session. We look for a follow through as these showed relative strength during the week, finishing near the highs of the week on Friday. Adobe reversed at the 50 day. Do note it closed at the highs of the session on Friday. Looking for a follow through RSI to move higher volume by price support to hold, volume increasing, looking for stochastics oversold to turn back up, with AMD showing similar results on Friday, closing at the highs of the session, and the 50-day moving average RSI rising. We saw strength in NVIDIA as well, with AMD showing above average volume, and stochastics now oversold and turning. This is telling you now the stock is starting to close in the upper half of its daily range, whereas the indicator continues lower when price action closes in the lower half of its daily range. That's telling you there is a change in tempo and most likely we'll see a string of candles with closes near the upper half of its daily range over the next couple of weeks, as it had in the past whenever we've seen this oversold condition after a consolidation period and return to a bullish trend. Alexion also bouncing at the 21 day, RSI is above 50, volume began to increase, just looking for stochastic to turn back up at 50. Alibaba highlighted last week for its relative strength, holding the 21 day, looking for a move off of the 9 EMA, RSI is above 50, stochastics embedded, showing there is strength of trend, Amazon beginning to reverse, closing at the upper half of its daily range, highs of the day. Stochastics oversold, beginning to turn. At Lazian, holding the 9 EMA. RSI above 50. Stochastics turning back up. MACD above its signal line. Autodesk, another software stock. RSI above 50. The 9 EMA holding, volume by price support. Stochastics turning. MACD above its signal line. Berry Global Plastics looking for a push off of the 21 day consolidation over the last three weeks. RSI now back above 50. Stochastics turning. MACD above its signal line. Cadence Design Consolidation. Cup and Handle Pattern similar to the indices. RSI rising. Stochastics near 50 turning and volume beginning to increase again. Chegg, purveyor of online and printed materials for students. Looking for a follow through, bounce off the 9 EMA, RSI showing strength of trend, volume beginning to increase, and stochastics embedded. DR Horton, as copper suggested previously, we're looking for builders to continue to improve, looking for a rise into year end, holding below the 50 day, RSI turning back up, digital turbine apps. Back to the 50 day, buyers stepping up, looking for stochastics to turn, giving us a good entry at the 50 day. Price action moves back above the 9 and 21 day. RSI will stay above 50, and your entry will be about as good as you're going to get if we see confirmation this week. Dollar General and the discount retailers 
tending to hold the 21 day in this case RSI above 50 looking for stochastics to turn back up volume starting to increase again on the reversal closing in the upper half of the daily range Dynatrace as well closing in the upper half of the daily range stochastics turning seeing a similar pattern in most of these IBD 50 stocks holding the 90 MA closing the upper half of its daily range above 50 RSI volume increasing MACD above its signal line and turning looking for stochastics to turn back up FUTU a three weeks tight flat base looking for a move higher RSI above 50 volume increasing MACD above its signal line and rising Horizon Therapeutics looking for a push above the 9 and 21 day this week back above volume by price resistance and a return to 52 week highs stochastics set up beautifully Looking for a follow through. Lowe's and Home Depot showing a tendency to bounce this week, most likely. Home improvement stocks faring well as people stay home and take care of chores around the house. Marvell, another semiconductor that's looking good. Reversal, three candle reversal. Looking for a follow through back above the 9 and 21 day. RSI above 50, volume increasing. And Stochastics now oversold, about ready to bounce. Meridian Biosciences looking for a bounce, RSI above 50, holding the 9 and 21 day. Nice looking cup forming, looking for a push back into the upper 20s this week. Stochastics turning from oversold, just watching for increasing volume this week. Microsoft, many of you looking at this one last week for a follow through, most likely will retest this pivot high. And then 52 week highs going into earnings. Volume increasing, stochastics turning. Nvidia holding as AMD did as well last week. Marvell, those three look really good going into the week. RSI above 50 and rising. Volume by price support holding. We're looking for stochastic in this oversold condition to turn back up to signal a bounce and a follow through confirmation with Nvidia. Pool holding the 90 MA, closing in the upper half of its daily range, inside day, but looking for follow through this week. Service now closing the upper half of its daily range, reversal on Thursday at the 9 and 21 day, looking for RSI to continue pointing higher. Similar thoughts for Synopsis, SNPS, closing in the upper half of its daily range, RSI above 50, holding above the 9 and 21 day. Trending cup and handle pattern looking for a breakout Taiwan semiconductor looking for a break of this pattern and a push higher workday same thoughts closing in the upper half of the daily range holding the 9 and 21 day look for a push above the 90 MA as RSI suggests stochastic is oversold and turning while not necessarily IBD 50 candidates, some stocks that were pointed out by Tom Boley over the weekend over at Stock Charts, looking very strong. Snap blew away the earnings last week, surging over 50% in three trading sessions. A clear signal that this company needs to be reevaluated and that the markets are in the process of doing so. Align Technology also blew away earnings. The markets were expecting 59 cents estimated. The company came in with $2.25 per share. Big gap and go. We're also watching Twilio, $45 billion software company, cloud communications, looking for a push higher and a breakout into earnings. Last time we saw that, big volume accumulation suggesting that institutions are getting ready for earnings and Tenable Holdings which has earnings coming up holding near recent support. We had also watched these stocks that institutions have been buying recently looking for follow through and many of these names like Domo, Stochastics oversold now looking for a break higher. Same with GMAB moving higher off of oversold conditions and Sun Power showing relative strength as many of the solar stocks were pulling back. Sun Power was pushing off the 21 day and moving higher. Okay, traders, that's going to do it for me. This is Cousin Benny coming to you from the closingprint.com. 
with your weekend video newsletter for October 25th, 2020. With seven trading days left to go before the elections, we're expecting the markets to move sideways again this week unless there is an unexpected stimulus deal on the table before the election, while anticipating a follow through into year end as we've presented here in after the following Super Tuesday results. So we'll send out a watch list later tonight around 11, 1130 on the East Coast, 8, 830 on the West Coast. Look for that in your inbox. Otherwise, have a great weekend. Take care. I hope this helps. Talk to you soon.